Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another episode of Brick Mania TV. Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back. Today Cody is here once again and you have an all new kit, don't you Cody? All new what kit. What is it? What do we got? Oh, it's all new. Uh, so it's the Universal Carrier Mark II. Yes. You may have seen this before in the past. So, yeah. <laughs> I think Dan's original, I think it was 2010 he built one. Yeah. And he's had a few other versions since then. He's also had one in the Rats and Foxes book. Right? Yeah, Rats yeah. and Foxes. Um, so yeah, this is it's my take version. on it. It's yeah, it's pretty much, I mean, it's about the same size using Brickmania track links. Yeah, it's uh, the Canadian, the Mark II, the Canadian version. We've got the Canadian markings on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A couple so, different uh, colorations of the stickers sure. from the Canadian markings. Yeah, so this was built uh, by the United States, Canada, and Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And it's always used by the Allies, other Commonwealth countries, mostly by the British and Commonwealth, Commonwealth countries. Um, Americans produced them. They also had their own version. They had the T-16, which instead of having six road wheels, it had eight. Whoa. And so, yeah, it was a little bit larger. Um, America. But, yeah, the Americans didn't really use them. Oh. <laughs> and also, they made them, so. Um, Who ended up using those? British and British. other Commonwealth we countries. Them. Eight no. wheels. The Canadians use them a lot too. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was another D-Day vehicle. Uh, there's, like the Sherman Funny Tanks, there were some different funny variants sure. of this. They also had, um, it's not really a flotation skirt, but they they had to have a water-sealed hull. They learned that in uh, North Africa once they were invading Italy, um, crossing that channel. Sure. They wanted water-sealed hull, otherwise landing from landing craft onto the beaches, you don't want water inside. No, go figure. So that was, <laughs> you know, obviously. Yeah. Um, so that was a feature that they implemented, uh, and then the Canadians started producing it. They had taller sides that were also waterproof, so when they're dealing with larger waves um, for D-Day, sure. they wouldn't get water inside. Um, they also had, I think, ambulance versions. And they also had one that they called the chicken coop, which they would put nets on top, so when the enemy would lob grenades at you, they Just wouldn't land off. inside the vehicle <laughs> and bounce off the top. Um, yeah, it, it's a uh, wide use. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it even saw use into the 60s. So, it's Very fun, cool. fun little carrier. So again, this is the Canadian variant. Um, just some different markings on this one. Yeah, different markings. You would also say that uh, their versions were a little bit different, even though they're very similar to the British versions. Um, I think they claim they could fit six comfortably or something, Ooh. but there's no it's photographic evidence of them ever seating more than that. But that was their claim to fame, like, oh, ours could fit more. <laughs> um, also called the Bren carrier because it carried the Bren machine gun. Right. And there's one brick arm included in the model, one Bren gun, black. Um, you could also mount a secondary one here. Which can go yeah, we that. got a perfect caliber just kind of to display. Um, those are available separately, but we got one here mm -hmm. to uh, All right. check that out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Getting cool. Getting some cool B footage. Nice. Uh, how, does this, <laughs> how does this particular model differ from uh, Dan's previous versions? Any tweaks that you made to it? Yeah, I made some tweaks. Uh, tweaks to the front ends, different wheels. It's all just one Lego piece rather than having tires on there. Um, not a, not a whole lot different. Um, I think it rolls well. It's really strong. Sure. You can put a lot of weight on there, a lot of playability. It's always cool to see, like... It does roll. You can roll it on paper. It rolls well with just, you know, you just need a little bit of tackiness. <laughs> Slides around on the surface. Yeah, I can't, I can't quite get it. So that. then, uh, yeah, standalone guy available coming out at the same time as this. This is our uh, uh, Canadians on uh, Juno Beach, right? So that's a standalone, yeah. some standalone stuff that goes well with this kit. We just have them out here to kind of to show off, you know, it fits in this guy in the carrier. I don't know if you have a way to position <laughs> him in there. He's just standing yeah, up there. What's up? Yeah, there's no, there's no figures inside the kit, right. but you can get standalone figures to fit in there. And with some gentle configuration, you can get them to 
snuggle up real fit, nice. Can you fit you, six in there? You can fit four. Four. So unlike what the, it, it's it's realistic. You know, there's there's <laughs> a claim nice. you could fit six, but you can't really. So <laughs> They're just saying that for padded their stats a bit. I right? bet you could fit six in there. They might just be standing in the back, but yeah. Here we go. Cool. That is the uh, that's the Universal Carrier Mark II designed by Cody Osell. What do you think? You like it, Cody? Are you happy with how it turned out? I do like it. It's it's a very durable model. Very durable. Very highly playable. Highly playable. Highly playable and durable. You heard it here first. Wow. Nice job, Cody. Thanks, man. Ah, well, thank you for watching. And for more information, please check out BrickMania.com. Anything else, Cody? You got the last word. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. I got it. Last word. Oh,